Welcome to Organic Chemistry, Polarity, and You. I'm your host for today, Sarah Mount, and as the title indicates, today we will be discussing the functional groups of organic molecules and their polarity. To start off with, let me introduce you to the master list. Here we have a list of all the possible functional groups, ranked in order from least polar to most polar. Time for a fun fact. If we change the title of the list from least polar to most polar to lowest boiling point to highest boiling point, the list does not change. This is because the more polar a molecule is, the stronger the intermolecular forces holding the molecule together will be. Therefore, more energy will be required to pry the molecules apart, making the amount of heat required to make the substance boil higher. And here's another fun fact. If we change the title of the list to least soluble in water to most soluble in water, the list will once again remain the same. This is because water is polar and like dissolves like. The slightly negative charge on water's oxygen atom will pull at the slightly positive atoms in the functional group's molecule, therefore dissolving those with high polarity far more easily than an atom where that charge is evenly distributed. Now it's time for specifics. Let's look at the first functional group on our list, hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are nonpolar molecules that exist naturally as a gas. Hydrocarbons are first on our list because they are nonpolar. The bond between carbon and hydrogen has an electronegativity difference of only 0.4, meaning that the two atoms are able to share electrons rather evenly. In addition, the structure of the molecules are usually relatively symmetrical, with carbon being pulled evenly in all directions. Because of this nonpolarity, they are insoluble in water. However, they are soluble in nonpolar substances. As the length of the carbon chain increases, the boiling point also increases due to the increased opportunity for the action of London dispersion forces. If you don't know what those are, please refer to the video guide. Our next functional group is ethers. Ethers exist naturally as a liquid. The oxygen present in ethers carbon chain results in a very weak dipole. Although the polarity is greater than that of hydrocarbons, the carbon-oxygen bond resembles carbon-carbon bonds and therefore is not very polar, with an electronegativity difference of only 0.89. Although an oxygen atom is present, ethers are unable to form hydrogen bonds with themselves because the oxygen atom is not bonded to hydrogen. Ethers are very soluble in water, and although they cannot hydrogen bond to themselves, they can occasionally accept hydrogen bonds from water. As the length of the carbon chain increases, the solubility decreases, due to the increased amount of London dispersion forces present. However, as the length of the carbon chain increases, the boiling point will increase as well. Aldehydes, ketones, and esters have all been grouped together on the master list due to their shared properties. All are polar due to the carbon double bonded to oxygen, and all are unable to form hydrogen bonds with themselves due to the lack of hydrogen-oxygen bonds. These molecules are usually found as liquids. They are all soluble in water and, in fact, able to form hydrogen bonds with water. However, similar to all items on our list, as the length of carbon chain increases, the molecule solubility decreases. Because of their inability to hydrogen bond, this group of molecules has a relatively low boiling point. Going along with the previously applied rule, as the length of the carbon chain increases, the boiling point increases. Next up, amines. Amines are polar due to their carbon-nitrogen and hydrogen-nitrogen bonds. First and second degree amines have stronger intermolecular forces than third degree amines because the nitrogen-hydrogen bond means that they are able to form hydrogen bonds with themselves. This ability of the first and second degree amines makes them more polar than aldehydes, esters, and ketones. Because of this polarity, amines are soluble in water, with the shorter strands being fully miscible due to their ability to hydrogen bond. Again, only first and second degree. The boiling point is about 49 degrees Celsius and increases with the length of the carbon chain. Continuing down our list, we find alcohols. Similar to amines in that they are able to hydrogen bond to themselves, alcohols are actually more polar because the oxygen-hydrogen bond has a greater electronegativity difference than the nitrogen-hydrogen bond. As usual, alcohols are soluble in water with shorter chains being completely miscible and with solubility decreasing as the length increases. They have a boiling point of about 117 degrees Celsius and the boiling point increases as length increases. Succeeding alcohols, we have carboxylic acids. Acids are able to hydrogen bond to themselves due to their oxygen-hydrogen bond and have an increased polarity compared to alcohols due to their reactive oxygen-carbon double bond. They are completely soluble in water and are able to form hydrogen bonds with water, and as length increases, solubility decreases. They have a boiling point of about 118 degrees Celsius. The final item on our list, and the most polar functional group, is amides, but only first and second degree. The nitrogen bonded to the hydrogens provides additional locations for hydrogen bonding between molecules to occur, which makes this functional group's intermolecular forces very strong. 
In fact, they are so strong that some amides are even solids at room temperature. This increased polarity makes amides very soluble in water and gives them the highest boiling point on our list, which is about 222 degrees Celsius. However, it is important to remember that only first and second degree amides, with their increased ability to hydrogen bond, are the most polar, and that third degree amides actually fall below alcohols on our list. So, concluding that thorough examination of our master list, I suppose this must be the end. Or is it? Surprise quiz! Place the following seven molecules on the blank master list in order of increasing polarity, one being the least polar, seven being the most. Ready and go! Did you finish? Here are the answers. If you got them all correct, congratulations! Give yourself a pat on the back. If you got them all wrong, maybe it would be a good idea to watch this video again. Later days!